What's going on everybody? I'm Fearless and today we are making a J Dilla beat from scratch in Ableton. But to really understand J Dilla's music, we gotta learn a little bit about him. J Dilla was a highly influential producer, rapper, and songwriter who was born in Detroit, Michigan. He emerged in the underground hip-hop scene in the 1990s in a group called Slum Village and went on to join some other collectives as well before eventually working with the likes of some of the biggest artists of our time, including Q-Tip, Busta Rhymes, Common, A Tribe Called Quest, Erica Badu, Mad Lib, and so, so much more. But what really made Dilla one of the most influential producers of all time was his style of beat making, which incorporated unquantized drum bounce and articulate sample compositioning, which ultimately adopted the name Drunk Funk. But unfortunately, Jay suffered with autoimmune complications, lupus, and a blood disease, which went on to take his life at a very early age of only 32. But even though he had such a short time here on this earth, the mark that JD left on hip hop will last for an eternity. All right, so we're gonna start off by collecting some samples and making a melody. What Jay did is he would take different jazz samples and collect different instruments or phrases or different things from each of them that he could all put together to create a brand new composition. And so that's what we're gonna be doing here today. And here are the samples that I went ahead and picked out today. But if you're looking for jazz samples, it's as easy as typing into YouTube jazz samples and then you just got to be choosy about which ones you like the most and we got a beautiful saxophone or at least some kind of horn here that i would love to incorporate in there as well and this can be a little difficult especially if it's the first time you're doing this so what you're going to want to think about is what different parts of each sample can I pull out to put together? So you might like the piano in one sample and the bells in another. And what you want to do is you want to solo those different parts there. And you're going to need to go ahead and match the scales so that they sound correct. So for this beat, I'm going to be using Serato sample to go ahead and find some melody chops for us in the songs. But remember that Jay Dilla didn't have these modern conveniences, right? He had to go ahead and manually find everything and piece it together. Okay, so this is important. What we're doing is we're going to solo out the band that just has that part that we want, right? That deep piano sound. We don't want all of the low information and all the high information that's not needed because we're going to be piecing multiple parts together. So we're just going to take this middle chunk right here, which is soloing the part that we want. Pulling up another instance of Serato sample, I have the second one in here, the second sample, which we want some of the bells or the higher piano sounds from. Yeah, that's a guitar sound, not a high piano. I kept saying high piano, but it's a guitar. Sounds amazing. That's the part we want right there. One other thing I'm doing, guys, is I'm putting both of these tracks in mono right here, and that's going to help us get sort of that dirty vibe that you hear with music during this time. That is just amazing. Yeah, we're going to have some fun with this. Let's let's we're going to separate this out to bells and horns. Next, let's get these horns in here and see if we can add maybe a little line at the end. And I think for this one, as you can see, we're going to leave more of the high end in here. We've kind of been chopping that out from the other one. So this one will kind of dominate that high end range. 
This one was supposed to be just horns, but I ended up finding another sort of a bell phrase that we gotta use. Whew, that sounds too good. All right, so let's get to these drums. Now, Jay Dilla would always use an MPC to make his drums and his bounce. But the only problem is I don't have an MPC, and there's a good chance you at home don't have an MPC either. So what can we do about that? Well, there's a couple things. First, you could either use a keyboard to get the bounce, or you could use your MIDI keyboard, or you can use a drum pad if you have some sort of pads, or you just got to drag all of the MIDI off of the grid so that it's unquantized. That's exactly what we want. We want it to have swing and groove so that it can feel alive. A good thing to do, especially if you don't have a bunch of boom bap kits, is to find drum breaks that you like. I picked out this one, for example, so I brought it in here and we're gonna steal the snare. But you're gonna also wanna make sure that it's not warped because sometimes Ableton warps it automatically. Now all I have to do is zoom in here and I just have to chop out this snare and then put it in a MIDI and then we can start playing it on our keyboard. The other thing you could do is play it early too. You don't always have to play it back. Now I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this and let's go ahead and find another snare that we can layer with it. Okay, so now that I got them, I'm gonna go ahead and group these together so I can affect them both as if they were the same thing. What I ended up doing is putting the CLA 76 on the snare group right here, and I smashed it a little bit, and they sound like they're one unit. Check this out. I might add a little texture to go with this as well. And I like this TikTok one. It almost sounds like a clock. And this one sounds really cool too. Next thing is the hi-hat loop. And I found this one. If we just drag it out here, we can hear what it sounds like. It sounds good, but I kind of want to make my own pattern. So what I'm going to do is just chop out this first one right here. And we're just going to do the basic two-step. And I'm probably going to keep these on the grid too. So we can just draw these in by hand. Super easy here. And what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to take down the velocities, maybe like every other one, kind of like this. Yeah, that gives it a cool vibe right there. And to make the hi-hats grittier, I like to put on this Drum Break 3 preset by RC20. If you got it, you know. And this kick is just absolutely slapping in this loop. So let's go ahead and turn warp off here and let's take a listen. It's just such a nice round kick. But what we're going to have to do is kind of dull it out using the EQ. Because in Jay Dilla's beats especially, the kicks aren't super punchy like they are today's. So this kick pattern that I came up with is very similar to one of Jay Dilla's most popular beats. And what he does with it is he plays it ahead of the grid quite a bit. I mean, check this out. If we go ahead and zoom in here, um, we're pulling this ahead quite a bit. Like this one would normally be right here. We're pulling it ahead all the way that much, but not every single one is the same. This one's a little bit less. This one's a little bit less, and it gives it more of a humanistic feel. Instead of taking everything and pulling it off the same amount, I'm only doing it in very selective amounts. <laughs> I am going to put this EQ compressor on it. This is the Kramer. It was free for a while, but there's a couple kick presets that I absolutely love here. Okay, so I EQ'd the heck out of this, but don't worry. I'm going to break it down for you right now. So the first thing is, like I said, I'm going to take out a lot of bassy tones out of this because it just had a lot. So I'm kind of flattening out the bass, kind of like just bringing it down just a little bit more. I'm chopping out all of the highs together just to get rid of some of that high end on the kick. And then there was also some sort of like a, from the drum loop, there was some sort of a hi-hat or something playing with it. And that's why I'm making these random cuts in here as well. I'm not just doing that for no reason. So this is before it. You can hear that hi-hat playing that high end. And then with it, it tames that high end a lot. 
the hi-hats still sound kind of sharp. And one thing you can do with the hi-hats if they're too sharp or if you want to kind of stretch out the length of them, what you can do is you can take a transient plugin, like I have quite a few of them here, transient master, trans perk, and we can go ahead and turn up this sustain here and it's going to make it sound longer. So let's try this out. Let's go ahead and solo this. So the last instrument that we're going to add here is a bass and you can use all kinds of stuff. You could use bass samples. You could use like a bass guitar sort of a bass. Um, Jay liked to use Moogs, Moog basses a lot. And what I like to do is actually solo the bass and the melody and it makes it easier to come up with the line instead of listening to all the drums as well. It makes it confusing. Yeah, we'll keep it that simple and we'll just copy this over now and I believe these shift up. Okay, so let's do a quick arrangement now. It's not gonna be anything crazy. Let's go ahead and just paste everything over a couple times. Maybe we even have this come in this effect a little bit later. Maybe we put it in right here. Let's see. Now we can kind of take out the kick, maybe some of the perks and bring it back in. But hey, I mean, we could pretty much just keep it going all the way across and just changing up the melody and it would be perfectly fine. So we're going to go ahead and listen to this to finish off the tutorial. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this one all the way through. And I hope you got some sweet sauce out of this that will help you make Jay Dilla beats even better. So definitely comment below if you have any questions or any suggestions for tutorials in the future. And yeah, let us know how do you like this? Do you like when I give little facts about the artists that we present? We can keep doing more of these if you guys enjoy them. I definitely enjoy making them, so that's freaking awesome. The last thing that I also want to mention is if you guys want to see some of the back end, you know, how I mix beats, master them, how I do everything from A to B and everything in between, uh, we went ahead and made a VIP group that you can sign up for, and it's got crazy advanced tutorials. It's got my whole process in it. You get lots of exclusives, like you get templates to the beats I make, you get crazy bonus sample packs all the time and all this amazing stuff. If any of that sounds interesting to you, go ahead and click the link below. It's called the Audio Hacker VIP. And besides that, guys, I love y'all so much. Thank you so much for watching. And let's take a listen to this finished beat.